guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my streamlined and efficient workflow for editing YouTube videos in iMovie. So this is the workflow that I think really makes the most sense and that I've settled into and been really happy with for a while now. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to please like, subscribe, comment, and share if you find this video helpful and would like to see more. I have my laptop here, so I am going to be looking down at the screen a bit. Okay, so what is workflow and why is it so important? I'll tell you why. To get into the flow, okay? What does that even mean? So I don't know if you guys have heard of flow state. Flow state is like a place you get to when you are really, really focused on something. And I think that's why they call it workflow, right? So a flow state, also known colloquially as being in the zone, and you guys have all heard people say that, right? Like, I'm in the zone, man, just in the zone, or don't zone out, right? It is the mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. Personally, when I've been in flow state, and it happens a lot for me because I'm an artist, I have extreme focus. So for me, when I usually go into the flow state, it's when I'm working on a project and it's usually something creative. So that's like art, if I'm drawing, if I'm painting, um, I get into flow state when I'm video editing. I get into the flow state when I'm crafting also. So when you have a good workflow and you're in that flow state, you're cruising, you're grooving, you're working really efficiently and your capacity for creativity is at an all-time high and you're capable of producing just really high quality work at a pretty advanced pace. So as I like to say, when you flow in, you glow in. I know that sounds stupid because you're making amazing work, okay? <clears throat> okay guys, so I have broken down my video editing process into six main steps. This is the process that I've discovered works well for me and it's probably very similar to what a lot of other people do because it really does just kind of make logical sense to do certain things in a certain order. My computer is really slow. Open Sesame. And as you guys know, um, iMovie comes with MacBooks. So for a lot of people, this is what they start out using. So we're in one of my old projects. Okay, so number one, the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to make big, important adjustments to all the clips right off the bat while they are still in big pieces comparing it to different clips to see if the color changes. Color correction, which is this, um, it looks like a painter's palette. And this bar on the left here, this is where you can adjust your contrast and your brightness. And this is the saturation. So if you need to increase saturation or decrease saturation, you can do that. I'm gonna just reset so everything is back to normal. This bar here is the warmth. You can either make it warmer or cooler. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is reduce background noise. So your clip is still selected and we're gonna go up to this bar and click on the volume area here. Now you'll see it says reduce background noise. So if you click on this little box, It'll adjust your audio to reduce the background noise so you'll be able to hear the vocals better. Um, over on the right side, you can do a voice enhance, music enhance, 
hum reduction. I used to try the voice enhance. Um, for some reason, it made it sound... It made it sound echoey, like the inside of a tin can. It wasn't good. So I don't really use this anymore. I pretty much just do the reduced background noise, and this 50% is how much reduced the background noise is. So if you want to like really reduce the background noise, you just bring that up. Um, but I'm just gonna reset, put it back to normal. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're going to adjust volume as needed. So you're gonna take a look at your clips, you're gonna be listening to how the volume sounds. All you have to do to adjust the volume is hover over the volume strip and there's a little bar, a little line there, and you'll have these arrows so you can increase the volume or decrease the volume. Now, a lot of people will actually detach their audio from their clip. Um, I prefer not to do that. I'll only do that if I really need to for some reason, because I like to keep my workspace really clean. If you want to separate the clip though, all you need to do is double click on the clip come down here, it says detach audio. Okay, so that was number one. We did big important adjustments to our clips right off the bat. We took a look at the color, the reducing background noise, and adjusting the volume. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys watched one of my last videos. I was having trouble with my throat, and I think I figured out what it is. <laughs> It's literally just that I am so not used to talking out loud when I record these videos, which, you know, is only like once a week. My throat <laughs> is like, it can't handle it. Okay, so number two, the next thing we're gonna do are our rough cuts. So this is where we will cut out dead space and mistakes and reorder the clips if necessary so it flows the way you intend and we'll also add any transitions that you want. So with this clip, for example, you see this space here where there's no, no audio. So we're gonna cut that out. So you're gonna place the cursor at the end of that audio and then you're going to double click or tap, and then you're gonna to go to split clip or control, I mean command B. And go ahead and click that, and you see it split the clip. Now we're gonna do the same thing right over here, double click, command B, split clip. So I've separated that dead space that I don't want, and then I can very easily double click and just delete that and get rid of it completely. And this black bar, what that means is that there is space removed between these two clips. If you click here to split, okay, so you see how even though these clips are split, there's no black bar there. That's because there's no time removed from between them. So they will flow continuously from one to the other. Whereas between these two clips here, there has been some time removed from the clips. So it'll skip from one to the next. After you've cut out all of the dead spaces and mistakes that you don't want, then you are going to reorder the clips if you need to so that they flow and add any transitions. Let's go ahead and split this up and let's say that we actually want this piece to be over here. So all you have to do is you have to grab it and you drag it over and that blue highlight shows you where it's gonna go and then drop it in. Now let's say you wanted a transition between these two clips. All you do is you go up to transitions. Let's say you wanna do a fade to black. So you click on the fade to black and you're just gonna drag this down between the clips and drop it and it'll automatically set it so that it's a one second. But if you double tap or double click on the transition, 
this little window will pop up and you can actually change this to two seconds and then apply if you want the transition to be a little longer um, or shorter. But it'll automatically do one second. Okay, so for step number three, we are going to polish. So this means that you're going to zoom in on the timeline and you're going to take a pass through the entire project. <clears throat> you're gonna take a pass through the entire, I'm sorry. I told you guys I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I'm not used to talking. I've been cooped up alone in quarantine all by myself. And guys, when I say by myself, like, I don't have a pet. I don't even have a plant, okay? Yes, it's very sad. So I apologize, I'm losing my voice. So we're going to zoom in on the timeline and take a pass through the entire project, tightening your clip transitions, and then we're gonna watch it all the way through to check for comprehension and flow, okay? Um, this is also the best time to delete any clips that aren't necessary or that are redundant to help shorten the overall length of the video. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the timeline. So this little bar here, you just click on it towards the right and it will zoom in further. So let's say that we wanted to tighten up a transition. Okay, so you see these two clips. Now in this one on the left, I stopped talking, which is why I cut out this dead space, right? And then in the next clip on the right, I resume talking. So what I can do to tighten up my transitions is I can go ahead and hover over the clip where you see those two arrows, those two arrows that are sticking out horizontally. Now if I click down and I drag, I can bring that in and tighten that up. I could drag it out the other way too, but that's where the dead space is, so we don't want that. So I drag that over to the left to get rid of more of that dead space. Same thing here. Even though it shows there is some audio here, I guarantee you that it's like basically nothing if you actually listen to it. So we can actually tighten this up as well just by clicking down and dragging it over a little bit. That's, that's all I mean when I say tightening up the transitions. And if you do that to all of your clips throughout your entire project, I guarantee you it's actually gonna cut down on a lot of time. And you know how quickly people get bored in, in watching these YouTube videos, so you definitely don't want any dead space, right? Okay, so then what you would do is you would wanna watch the project all the way through and just double check for comprehension and make sure that um, you don't need to move any clips around anymore. Um, that's also when you want to delete any clips that you don't need or that might be redundant. Okay, so step number four is we're going to add text and overlays, okay? So this is any text you want displayed during the video and any images you want to pop up. So an overlay is when you're going to place an image on top of the existing clips. So it'll actually be, that's why it's called overlay, it'll be laying on top of the existing clip. It's literally just a JPEG or a PNG that you import into your project. iMovie is not great when it comes to text and it doesn't have like fun um, images that you can use. So I highly recommend um, using something like Photoshop or Canva to get your text and your fun pop-up images or whatever you wanna have in your video um, because iMovie really doesn't provide any of that. So let's say we want to put some kind of text overlay so I'm gonna go back to my media. Okay, let's just use this thing. This is something that I made in Canva. So all I did is I imported it into my project. So if you don't know how to import something, um, you see this little down arrow, you click on that little down arrow 
and here you can access all of your files. So you would just locate the file you want and you would do import over here on the bottom right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the image that you want or the text. This could be just an image or it could be text or both. It's the same process, okay? So whatever it is that you wanna put in here as an overlay, you're going to go ahead and drag the image down to the timeline and you're going to drop it where you want it to go. So iMovie automatically does this weird um, Ken Burns, which is basically just a little animation. It says that you're gonna move from point A to point B. So that's not what we want, okay? I mean, maybe you do want it to be moving or zooming in or whatever, but let's stick to the basics, okay? So you've clicked on your image or your text image that you just put in the timeline. Now we're gonna go up here and you're gonna click fit. We want it to fit, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and click the video overlay settings, this first tab here. And you're gonna change cutaway. You're gonna change it to picture in picture. So those are the two things you need to do. At this first icon, you change it to picture in picture. And then at the cropping icon, you change it to fit, okay? So what that'll do is now we can see our image is here in the video. So you can drag this wherever you want it to go. Let's cover up my face because it looks so scary in that. And you can adjust it. So iMovie automatically does that little fade thing. See how it, it disappears slowly, it fades away. You don't have to keep that if you don't want to. So on the image here, you'll see this little dot. So you can drag this in or out and this changes how long the fade lasts. So if you don't want any fade at all, just drag it all the way out. And then you'll see when you play this, the image just disappears real quick. And that's all you really have to do for overlays. Um, this would probably be a good time to also add your sound effects. Um, iMovie does have here an audio up at the top if you click audio. It does have some sound effects. So alarm and like barking dogs, bells and all of these things. So just click on the one you want and you will drag it down and place it underneath and then just adjust the length of that if you want it to be real quick or not. Okay, number five is music. Music is so important, you guys. So I use free music from the YouTube Creators Studio, um, which is copyright safe. There are other places you can get copyright safe music, um, but for me right now, I'm just sticking to stuff that's free, so I use the YouTube Creator Studio. So you're gonna go find whatever music you want, and you're going to download it, then you're going to import it into your media, media for your project. So same thing as what I mentioned before, you're gonna click that little down arrow, locate it, import it, and then you'll see the music will show up here in your media. And really easy, all you do is you select the song that you want, you drag it down, and put it at the very bottom. This layering process keeps things organized. So all you do is you place the music clip where you want it and you want to make sure that it's starting and ending where it makes sense for you and your project and what you're going for. So you might want to drag this around a little bit to adjust it exactly where you want it to be. And yes, you can break up your music audio into different bits and pieces. So let's say that I wanted to go ahead and split the clip here. With your cursor, hold it where you want to create the break, double click, and split clip. So that 
broke up the song into two different pieces. So now if I wanted to separate those, I can. So you really just play around with your music to put it where you want it to be. And then you want to adjust the volume and definitely make sure that you can hear what you're saying in your video, that the music isn't overpowering your voice, right? So that's why it's really important to always listen to your project all the way through. So to adjust the volume, all you do is you hover over the little line here and you're gonna click down. You can drag that down to make it quieter and you can drag it up to make it louder. If you see that this is getting into the red, that's bad. You don't wanna have a lot of red, <laughs> okay? And even the yellow, you only want maybe just the tips to be a little bit yellow and that's gonna be pretty dang loud. So um, if you just want background music, you are gonna to need to lower that all the way down to like less than 10%. Um, and even 10 may be a little bit too loud. So you just need to test it out to see what, what works for you. And then after you've adjusted the volume, uh, these little dots on the side are for fading in and out. So if you go ahead and drag this dot in, this would make it so that the song doesn't start abruptly. It actually fades in. And then you can do the same thing on the other side to fade it out. So that song would not end abruptly. It would actually fade out more slowly. So you can adjust these however you think is needed. Oh man, I'm concerned this video might be really long. I've had tea here this whole time. Um, I always forget to drink my tea, which I think is very common um, when you're working that you'll forget to drink your, you know. Apparently it's a thing um, on YouTube that people will have cups and mugs like in their shot but it might actually just be empty and they just put it there for like aesthetics. Have you guys heard of that? Last step, number six. So for the final step, you are going to watch your video all the way through to check for mistakes before exporting. So that might sound like a no-brainer, but you would be surprised how many people don't actually watch their project when it's when they're done with it and just just don't don't do that okay so you're going to watch your video all the way through to check for mistakes before exporting and how do you export well i'll show you up at the top you see this little export oops you see this little oh that's that's my cat, by the way, my, my childhood kitty cat named Dusty. Anyways, um, so upper right corner, you see this little symbol. This is the export symbol, right? So you go ahead and click on this and this little window pops up. Um, I always do export file. So you just click on this. This window will pop up. So this is the description. You can say whatever you want in there. Uh, the format, this is video and audio that we're exporting. The resolution, depending on what you want and what you were filming on, I'm doing 1080p for mine. Um, quality, best, pro res, and then for compress, um, I usually do better quality. So then what you're going to do is you're going to click next. So this is up to you where you want to save your project and what you want to call it. You just put the name up here and then I don't know if you want to save it to your desktop or wherever, tell it where you want it to go. And then you will click save and then it'll start exporting. So once it is exporting in this upper right hand corner, you will see a little circle and the circle will just kind of show you how far along it is in the exporting process. And once that's done, um, it'll let you know and then you can go um, find wherever the movie save to on your computer and that's it. Once you locate it on your computer, 
I would watch it again, but that's just me. Um, I like to be super thorough about everything. So, you know, basically by the time you're done with this dang project, you should be completely sick of it, okay? That's a good sign if you are. That means you've done your job. Oh, and I had a tip for you guys that I almost forgot to mention. So for some reason, my clips with slow motion and fast motion, they were causing exporting issues. Like it literally was not exporting. Going in and detaching the audio from those clips and maybe even deleting the audio if you don't need it in those clips, um, but at least detaching the audio, that solved the exporting problem. And I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know, but if you're having exporting problems, okay, and you have slow motion or fast motion clips, try that, okay? It might, it might save your day. So yeah, those are the six steps that I recommend for an efficient video editing workflow. I hope that that was helpful. Now, if you would be interested in a more detailed video on editing an iMovie, please give this video a thumbs up comment below and subscribe so you don't miss out on more. Also, if you're interested in purchasing an outlined worksheet to help guide you through this whole process, I do have a digital download available on Etsy. Please use the link below in the description. Thank you for watching guys. Thank you for caring. Thank you for sharing. I really hope you found this video helpful. Have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Okie dokie, artichoke. No concept of the passage of time, right? So I just would not even notice how much time had gone by and I'd be sitting there for who knows how long working and the next thing you know, you're almost pissing your pants. You realize how bad you have to pee when you finally come out of that flow state. And as you guys know, iMovie comes And as you guys know, um, iMovie comes...